This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, and so if you want to indirectly support the channel while also buying or selling cards for your own matches, your own tournaments, your own duels, your own purposes, your own needs, then definitely check out their site and see what they have to offer you. I'm a big fan of how they do business, and their pricing and shipping from what I've seen and experienced thus far are both top notch. So definitely check out their site, which is linked in the description, and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! deck profile video, and this time it is going to be an updated Dragoon D deck profile for the June 12th format that comes up in the next couple of weeks. Now, obviously not very much changes in terms of the scope of what the deck has access to in terms of card pool, but we do have a rather large basic loss that the deck took in the form of Elder Entity Norden being Forbidden. So what that means is that a lot of the cool like three card combos that you had access to with Ravine Flying Sense Diffusion now have to be dialed back in terms of what their output range is and you have to change the deck up a bit in terms of what combo card ratios you're running, what quantities of combo cards you're running versus defensive line cards, things of that nature. We don't really have that big fallback in terms of Norden being literally like two combo pieces in one. We don't really have that anymore. So. This is a primary, like primarily just a, a beta deck list. Uh, I have a couple of things that I'm still testing with this list um, in terms of trying to find reliable ways to make Masterpiece and Dryden not huge glaring problems going second. Uh, I'm thinking about cards like Forbidden Dress and things like that. Th cards that are rather niche, but actually like just in like interact only with your cards so that you don't like fall victim to them having a Masterpiece unaffected by spells and you have things like Chalice and My Body is a Shield in your hand. Uh, stuff like that, but uh, this deck has a very interesting uh, little thing where it's, like Vajrayana just naturally can out Masterpiece by pumping itself to 38 um, And like you can go to 5k with a uh, divine lance and shit like that So there's a there's a few little like nuances and things that happen with this deck in terms of what it has capabilities of doing But anyway, I'm just gonna show you guys the deck list uh, It's very very combo centric in terms of what uh, it's like comprising structure is but anyway uh, three copies of Dragoon Ducks, one copy of Blackwing Zephyros the Elite Two copies of Garuda the Wind Spirit. We're playing. Uh, we're playing two of these because it's it's rather important to be able to either draw into this to be an extender or to be able to search it mid combo sequence to do something like make a rank four because you want to be able to open your first turn play with either a Beals uh, with like a, another level eight synchro out as well um, or you want to be opening things like um, like Dweller Crystal Wing like things like that and this. This is what helps you facilitate like that getting into Dweller aspect because uh, going into Dweller is usually like four card combos, but it's really non-specific four card combos. Uh, but a lot of the three card combos end you with Zolkin, Beals, Darkness Metal, and a level eight synchro of your choice. Usually something like Crystal Wing. But uh, continuing on, playing uh, three Dragoon Armor Mistleton because we need access into a lot of combo potential straight out of the gate. The fact that we have a lot of Dragon Ravines because of set rotation. Uh, means that this card and cards like this, Insta Fusion and Garuda, just get a lot better in terms of being supporting uh, combo extenders because of the fact that you can consistently get to Ravine, meaning you can consistently get to Flanks, which means that if you draw this card, amazing. But that's basically the gist of that. Uh, one Red Eyes Darkness Metal because this card is still at one, uh, <laughs> kind of justifiably. This is one of like the best boss monsters in the game's history. Uh, but if it wasn't more than one, I would definitely be playing more than one. If it was at two, I'd definitely be playing two. Uh, the card's insane to draw nowadays with how many combo uh, like hands we have. Uh, but for tuners, three copies of Dragoonie Phalanx and then one copy of Dragoonie Acolytes is back in the deck. Uh, specifically because we need this card to out things like Diagram. Uh, when we're using Vajrayana to out Masterpiece, basically, if we're able to use Vajrayana to out Masterpiece, uh, you want to be able to put Acolytes onto it as an equip from Grave or you want to be able to Divine Lance it out of your deck onto the Vajrayana. Uh, because that way you can send this off of Vajrayana, you can pop the Dragonic Diagram if that's face up, so that it's not being, uh, it's not providing Masterpiece with a battle protection, and then you can just run it over with the Vajrayana. Uh, so like, this is kind of important to be played now. Um, it does give you a little bit of extra consistency in form of you, uh, you can draw a tuner to like, normal summon and use Instant Fusion for Mavelis, uh, for, and shit like that, but... Overall, its main purpose is literally to out just random niche cards that are protecting things like Masterpiece in the form of Dragonic Diagram. Uh, but the last two tuners in the deck is two copies of Miss Valley Baby Rock. This is a card that I could easily see myself bumping to three in the future. Uh, it's actually just very important now, specifically because a lot of the combos that are more extensive that we had easy access to because of Institution and Anorden, they become a little bit harder to access, but the easiest way to access them is if you drew Baby Rock as like random pieces of your hand outside of your starting combo pieces, 
because then you get to add things like Garuda discarding Baby Rock, and you get to just combo sequence into like a ton of like different uh, situations and plays uh, and stuff like that based off what is in your extra deck. So uh, it's definitely a card that's kind of mandatory at two in this version because of the specific turn one plays you're trying to hit. Uh, but it's definitely a card that could probably be bumped to three. Uh, but one copy of Max C and two copies of Ash Blossom and Joy Spring for just hand traps. Uh, we're not playing the DD Crow in this build like I was in the last build because, again, we lost Norden. Uh, and Norden, like I said, with Instant Fusion, Norden was kind of two combo pieces in one. And so it made your combos a lot easier to like access. And you could have bulk monsters in your hand that you could trade out for DD Crow as a hand trap. Uh, but now we really just don't have that luxury. We want to commit all of our monster resources in hand into our board by searching multiple Garudas, shit like that. But for the spells, that's 19 monsters, by the way. For the spells, there's uh, two Dragon Ravine, there's three Terraforming, there is three Set Rotations, so essentially eight Dragon Ravines, and then one copy of Magical Midbreaker uh, Field. Now this card, uh, you could be playing Oracle of Zephra, um, or you could be playing Gateway to Chaos. This card is kind of just as decent as either of them. Um, it still prevents your opponent from playing a field spell, which is fine. Um, it does make like all of your stuff and your opponent's stuff Magispector type cards against your against one another. So you do kind of actually have some uh, some sort of applications there uh, because you can like throw up a Crystal Wing, and if your opponent flips this, like then to like protect themselves, you're also protecting your Crystal Wing. Um, so there's things like that, but uh, I don't want to play Oracle of Zephyr or Gateway to Chaos on the off chance. Well, more so Oracle of Zephyr. Zephyr is actually like a legitimate deck. Uh, so I don't want to give my opponent an Oracle of Zephyr turn one and have them flip it over and search a card. Like, I don't want to do that. Gateway to Chaos is definitely a little bit more uh, reasonable to play, but I play in, like, some weird areas of the internet, and some people legitimately just play Blackluster Soldiers. So, like, this is just the safest option for me. Um, and I'm only playing one because I'm okay with, like, it's like the Brilliant Fusion ratio. You play one Garnet, three Brilliant Fusion. If you draw it, sucks to suck. You're going to bank on the fact that you're not going to draw it more times than you are. Uh, so there's things like that. But anyway, uh, two cards of consonants for uh, draw power. You're trying to turbo into different combo pieces as well. You have an additional tuner in the deck before the uh, You've got the capability of searching combo pieces uh, to discard for cards of consonants mid-combo string. Um, if, you, uh, if you have things like that, because you do draw one card in a lot of the combos off Coral Dragon. And then uh, after that, you can summon Gatorg again. So usually if you have another card to rotate out of your hand for a Dragon Tuner, you can. And then use cards of consonants to draw two fresh cards. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff like that in that area. And then two copies of Dragoony Divine Lance. This card is actually a little bit more important now because, again, uh, we're trying to find reliable ways to out things like Masterpiece and stuff like that. Um, and, like, this just allows you to, like, extend your combo sequence. It's also, like, a halfway decent combo extender by itself. Like, Ravine Phalanx plus this allows you to make, uh, allows you to make Gatorg, add and discard Zephyros, use this on the Gatorg, special Phalanx from deck and then bounce Ravine for Zephyros, or bounce this for Zephyros. Usually this ends up being what gets bounced. Um, so it puts it back in your hand, and then you get Zephyros, and you get to make Vajrayana, and then go into a Tum, um, and do just like a regular Ravine-Zephyros combo. But it took just as few cards. It took literally only two cards, because this ends up recycling itself to your hand. Um, so there's that. So this is a combo starter in certain instances, but also like the fact that it allows your Vajrayana to be able to equip Akles from deck to do things like out Masterpiece, uh, stuff like that, because... Uh, a lot of people will just you, you can you can you can do things with this deck to allow uh, your opponent to masterpiece you in a situation, and then you are still able to get like a Vajrayana back to the board and equip this and equip a an Achilles from deck and do stuff like that. So there are there are play lines and play sequences that you can do with this deck like that. It's definitely not nearly as much of a one trick pony as it used to be. Uh, you just have to be smart with your play structuring, but only two instant fusions now. We are still playing Mavelis, even though we did lose Norden. We're playing Mavelis, so two instant fusions seems like the right number because uh, there's no way to recycle the Mavelis. And we've got a bunch of other combo starters and combo extenders in the form of this. Really, just does the same thing as Mistleton, as Garuda. Um, it's it's just a better Divine Lance essentially. So like just two of it. I just want to see it sometime, but not all of the time. So there's things like that. Uh, and then the one Soul Charge, because this card is legitimately just a win button. Um, it's a very good recovery card as well. Um, if you're doing shit like that, it's 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 a good card to let you play into your opponent's boards going second. But anyway, that was all of the spells. I believe there's like 16 of them, if I remember correctly. Not playing cards like Foolish Burial and stuff like that, just because we've got such a high access into uh, Dragoonies, uh, Dragon Ravine, and stuff like that, and other combo extenders usually don't just don't need it anymore. Uh, but there are five traps in the deck, which are three Solemn Strike, one Solemn Warning, and one Imperial Order. Um, you could be playing Dragon's Bind in the main because of like how 
zoo heavy the format is uh, these just seem a little bit better suited for the like the wide scope of things uh, especially again you could just have like imperial order and do shit like go first turn dweller stardust imperial order or uh, like dweller beals imperial order things like that uh, and that's just like game against pure draco variants um, and uh, you can like have things like again like crystal wing for like whatever zoo cards they could be do playing and things of that nature uh, but Dragon's Bind is definitely a card I would side in this deck for those more uh, zoo-oriented decks, and that is why the, there is certain choices in the extra deck as well, you know, which you will see very shortly in the form of like Star of Spark Dragon. But anyway, for the extra deck, one Crystal Wing, uh, one Beals of Diabolic Dragons, one Scrap Dragon, one Stardust Dragon, and then one Stardust Spark Dragon. Again, the Stardust Spark Dragon is uh, is more for when you like go into sided games and you have things like Dragon's Bind in your deck because this is obviously better than regular Stardust again when you have Dragon's Bind up. Shit like that. Uh, it just allows you to have a, a certain bit of a floodgate reach in uh, certain matchups and things like that. Uh, but those are all of the level 8s. Uh, for the level 6s, we've got a Coral Dragon, a Gaederg, and Triple Vajrayana. And then the last Synchro in the main deck is an Ultimaya Zulkin, because you can do Zulkin plays very easily with this deck now. Uh, Ravine Phalanx Mistleton ends with Zulkin drawing a card and any level 8 Synchro that you want, um, usually Crystal Wing. Uh, so Beals, Crystal Wing, uh, Zulkin, and Darkness Metal. So like, it's a pretty significant play, and I might do a combo video on that because I can't remember if I did anything like that in the previous time of this channel. Can't remember, but I might just do it again. But anyway, Brixies is uh, one Ptolemy M7, one Atum, and one uh, Abyss Dweller. This is uh, very hard to make now um, easily because. Previously, Ravine Phalanx Instant Fusion Hands would always be able to vomit out any rank 4 of choice. It would either be Queen Dragon Jin or Abyss Dweller, depending on what you know you wanted to do. Abyss Dweller is just a really strong first turn option uh, because it just like shits on the Dino decks, it shits on uh, like True Draco, things like that. Um, and like I said, depending on your hand, how like stacked with combo pieces it is, you are capable of going Abyss Dweller plus Beals. Um, you're very often able to go Abyss Dweller plus any level 8 that you want plus Darkness Metal, which is usually Crystal Wing. It's usually Dweller Crystal Wing um, or Dweller Stardust. So, like, there's all these different capabilities and options and functionalities that you have access to. Uh, so, all that sort of nonsense. But anyway, last card in the extra deck is the obvious target for Instant Fusion, Mavelis. We're back to using this bitch again. Um, this thing's always been in my extra deck with Norden there, but with Norden gone... We're back to using Mavelis for its intended purpose. So you still have access into things like Instant Fusion plus one of your tuners being able to uh, get you into like a level 8 of your choice. Uh, but that's not really that ideal. You usually want to just be drawing combo pieces. And so that's what you're trying to do. And you have more combo pieces in your deck because you're playing Instant Fusion. So there's stuff like that. But anyway, I might do some, uh, some just light combo videos for this deck because I've been doing a lot of combo tutorials recently. Um, and so, yeah, like I said, like Ravine Phalanx Mistleton by itself is making Zulkin, Beals, uh, Crystal Wing, Darkness Metal, uh, and um, and a uh, level 8 of your choice, which is usually, like I said, Crystal Wing, uh, just because it picks up the slack in certain matchups, because you don't want to be, like, making Beals unprotected against, like, Zoo, where they're able to just go whiptail you, and it's like, that's just a bad time. But anyway, that is this deck list. Like I said, there are some things that I'm considering changing in the future, there are some things I'm trying to explore. Uh, in terms of like things that I'm trying to test to make the deck more reliable at going second and outing things like Drynant and Masterpiece. Uh, Masterpiece kind of isn't that big of a deal uh, because of just how big the things are in this deck that you can do. Like again, again, you can just make Vajrayana 38. Like that's just a huge thing. Like you could just do that. Um, you can make Crystal Wing and Crystal Wing can attack the Masterpiece. Uh, like there's there's so many different ways that you have like for like streamlined outing of the Masterpiece. But the issue mainly is is dealing with them disrupting your play um, in terms of disrupting your monster. And again, like things like Forbidden Dress might be like the like the, the solution to that uh, because it's it doesn't influence it doesn't influence their board at all. It doesn't try to mess with them at all in case they might be unaffected by spells. Um, so like it's just one of those things. It's one of those conceptuals that's in my head. Um, for something to try, but anyway, like I said, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Like I said, this is a uh, this is just a this is a deck list that I've been testing a lot, and I've been liking the combo potentiality of the deck post Norden being banned, all that sort of stuff. But still having some things that I'm trying to work out in the list as far as outing things going second, or I might just say, fuck it, we just trying to go first. It's a fun deck, so <laughs> there might just be that. But anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Again, let me know what your thoughts are. 
yada yada yada. Links are in the description of my Facebook and Patreon pages. If you want to support the channel directly, then Patreon is the best way to do so. There are certain reward tiers that get you added benefits, like getting into my private Discord server to chat with me on a 24-hour basis, seven days a week if I'm available on phone or computer, stuff like that, as well as it's just a fantastic way to help things go forward with the channel for future projects that I have that I want to make happen. And even as little as a dollar is a wonderful, wonderful addition to the amount of capability I'm able to do in the coming months in the channel. So definitely check that out if you're interested and want to help support what you like. But other than that, if you're new here, thanks for watching, and maybe consider subscribing, all that sort of nonsense. Give this video a like if you liked the content that I've been producing. Let me know if you guys want to see some combo tutorials for like the new ways that I've been molding boards with this specific deck in the comments down below, stuff like that, all the usual. But other than that, that is it for this video. Thanks for watching again. Thanks for your time as always, and take care, guys. I will see you in the next video.